Good evening, friends, and welcome back once again to the Or News broadcast. I'm Daniel Cook, your host every day for the Daily English Flash News edition, which we have Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. In today's news, there is a new police academy in Sauk, and Prime Minister Eddie Rama spoke today at the inauguration ceremony. In his speech, the Prime Minister had a message to convey to the EU. He said, Regarding the funding, the Albanians are very grateful for the help. I want to thank you for the funds given, as it is a great thing. We are very grateful, but we do not feel good when you constantly count the money that you have given us. In fact, you should give us a lot more, not because we are better than the others, but because our fight against organized crime in our region is not only our fight. It is not local. It is an international fight. Only cross-border cooperation can bring success. Organized crime is now becoming more organized than the EU because there is no European Commission for Organized Crime. It has no deliberations and operates at tremendous speeds, said Prime Minister Rama. The EU Ambassador Romana Vlahutin was also present at the ceremony, but she spoke before the Prime Minister and she did not have the opportunity to reply to him. In her speech, she mentioned the investments that the EU plans to make in Albania. Ambassador Vlahutin noted the importance of investing in police education, just like it was important at the beginning of their cooperation with other partners. The Interior Minister Tahiri spoke as well, calling the police academy a new approach by the police to the public. He warned, however, that the police officers will be punished in cases of abuse of the citizens. The police academy has been restored with funding from the European Union and 500 new officers will be added to the state police forces. The socialist MP Tom Doshi was very critical today against his own party leader, Prime Minister Eddie Rama. He said that the war between him and Prime Minister Rama has just begun and that there will be no more peace between them. Doshi has asked the Prime Minister to publicize the requests that he has made. He said, My concerns are related to the problems that exist within the Socialist Party and to the promises that the Prime Minister made during the electoral campaign. He has not made any investments in Škodra, but only in the south of the country. I would like to express to him that there will be no more peace between us. We will see who will come out as the loser in this situation. I will make everything public. He must also make everything public that he says. The foundations of the majority and of the government will be shaken when I speak again. I will continue to be part of the Socialist Party group. I represent the people of Škodra. Adi Rama has shown that he is ungrateful to me and to the people of Škodra who voted for him. We will see the true situation in the local elections. When asked whether he is afraid of being expelled from the Socialist Party group for these statements, Mr. Doshi said, There is no reason to expel me from the Socialist group. I only ask for transparency from Edi Rama and nothing else. The economy of the country is now worse than it was in the time of Sali Berisha. The MP representing Škodra started his battle with Prime Minister Rama during the meeting of the Socialist Group on the 23rd of February. In that meeting, he accused the leader of the majority and asked for some changes in the government. After his statement, which was made outside of the parliament, Tom Doshi returned to the plenary session. Sitting next to him was the socialist MP, Kocho Kokodima. They spoke among themselves for about 10 minutes, and it is not known exactly what the conversation entailed. It could be seen that Kokodima was trying to play the role of a negotiator to ease the tension between Prime Minister Rama and Mr. Doshi. Afterward, the two of them left the plenary session together. The latest hearing for the mayor of Vlora was held today in the Vlora Court of Appeals. The prosecution had asked the court for a change in his security measure, but the court did not change its order and currently he is still under obligation of appearance. Mayor Jika was present in the court session today to object to the appeal of the prosecution. Jika adamantly proclaimed his innocence, saying that he can prove it with facts. I am present in the court today to show my legislative correctness, he said. In the session that was held in the hospital of Tirana, I was told that I have obstructed the investigation. 
I ask for the removal of the security order in prison custody, as it is not true that there are 15 buildings with falsified documents. I will prove that this accusation is false with documentation. My innocence will be proven in the next session, said Jika. The court did change the security measure for the head of the urban planning department, Doriana Sulai, as well as the businessman, Artur Haji. The court ordered obligation of appearance for both of them. The prosecution is accusing Shpetim Jika, Doriana Sulai, and Artur Haji of falsifying the building permit for an 11-story building. The issue of hospital waste caused great debate in the parliament today between the Democratic Party and the Minister of Health. The Democratic MP and the chairwoman of the Commission of Help, Health, Albana Vokshi, called the Minister Bechai to give an explanation of the disposal of hospital waste. In reply, Minister Bechai denied that the hospital waste is being disposed of in the public dumpsters. He said that they are being recycled. Vokshi then told the minister that he should view the footage that was made public by Channel 1 TV to see the shocking evidence of inappropriate hazardous waste disposal. She even went so far as to tell the minister that he should resign from his office, saying that everyone is requesting his resignation. A series of lawsuits have been filed against mayors all around the country as the local elections approach. Four months before the local government elections, the National Inspectorate for the Protection of the Territory has launched a campaign of lawsuits against mayors who have acted in violation of the law. The media has approached this campaign as a political battle by the government against the local elected officials. But the Chief Inspector Beachy says that this is not a political and that the inspectorate is merely acting in accordance with the law. She announced that 40 political officials have been placed under investigation so far, and that the mission of the inspectorate will be to continue to uphold the law even after the elections of June 21st. The chief inspector notes that the lawsuits have been submitted to the prosecution, and now it is their responsibility to take the appropriate legal measures. She said that the law should be applied in the same way to the senior political officials as it is to the ordinary citizens. The Albanian government has made it clear that they do not intend to give up their rivers to the neighboring countries. The debate concerns the deviation of the river Vyosa in favor of Greece and the deviation of the river Radica in favor of Macedonia. From the podium of the assembly, the Minister of Environment, Leftar Koka, gave assurance that both projects will be done in accordance with the international conventions. One thing is clear, he said, and I guarantee all the MPs and all the Albanians that this government will not give up its rivers to the neighbors. We are here to respect the international conventions, especially when it comes to cross-border relations. Minister Koka drew the attention of the Macedonian government that he has made a study without previously consulting it with the Albanian government, but which nevertheless will not advance unless it is in accordance with the conventions. He continued, Albania adheres to both the international conventions that manage transboundary waters. The feasibility study, which was funded by the World Bank, has already been, been completed. The Macedonian state did not seek the opinion or the evaluation of the Albanian government. Today, we respond to them that in respect of the conventions, Albania should be a part of this assessment and give consultation on the environmental impact of this plan, said Minister Koka. In art news, the Ministry of Culture has turned its attention to the poor conditions of the theater in Shkodra. Representatives of the Ministry of Culture and the Institute of Cultural Monuments visited the theater today. Calling it an emergency situation, the Vice Minister of Culture, Zef Chuni, said that the ministry cannot leave the theater in its current conditions, as it is one of the most important theaters in the country. The Grand Master of the Theater, Zef Deda, said that his only wish is that this inspection is not part of the electoral campaign. The theater in Skodra will celebrate its 65th anniversary this year, and its poor conditions were made public a few weeks ago.
That concludes our news for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. We will be back again at the same time tomorrow with more translated news in English. Thanks, and have a great night.